skip to the book of Matthew and pick it up there in, in chapter 14, verse 26. It says, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. So Peter, Jesus is standing there right in front of Peter, telling him, come to me. And Peter takes a few steps towards him, but then he takes his eyes off Jesus. He starts focusing on the wind and the waves and all the scary things going on around him, and he starts to sink. Jesus has to come over and pick him up out of the water. I think sometimes the next step that God wants us to take, the path he wants us to be on, is clear. We can see it, but it's scary, or it's uncomfortable, or it looks like work, or there's uncertainty involved. And so we stay stuck where we're at because we're, we're too nervous, we're too anxious, we're too scared to take that step. Psalm 56.3 says, when I'm afraid, I'll put my trust in you. About four years ago, my wife Callie and I made the decision to start tithing, to give 10% of our income back to God, and it was a huge step of faith for us. We had had, we had, had several conversations about it, and, and when we you know, looked at our budget each month, we were like, man, after we pay all our bills, the amount that's left over doesn't even equal 10% of our income. How in the world could we tithe? Part of the problem was we were looking at it upside down. God doesn't want the leftover. He wants to be a priority. But it, it, was, it was a scary thing for us. And over time, we, we started to realize, we started to look at all the different ways God had worked in our lives. He had worked in our marriage. You know, he had worked in our family, in our relationships. He had done so many awesome things. We started to feel like we were robbing him by not tithing. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty by saying that, but that's how we felt. We felt like we, after everything he's done for us, the very least we could do is give him back a tenth of what he's given us. We didn't know how it was going to work, but we just tried our best to, to trust Jesus and keep our eyes focused on him. And we, we fixed our budget. We made the very first line item on there that just says God. We give him the first 10%. And almost immediately, as soon as we started to increase our giving, God started to increase our income. And not a ton, but enough to make sure we could cover everything. You know, we, we would get an unexpected insurance refund check or a family member would send us a cash gift, or one of us would get an unexpected raise or a bonus at work, and it just happened so frequently, it almost became a running joke in our house. We had unexpected money would show up, and we'd just look at each other and be like, there's God again. And he made sure that when we gave him the first 10%, that the other 90% that we had was enough to cover everything that we needed. And we're not rich or anything, but it's been a long time since we really had to worry whether we were going to be able to pay a bill, and just that feels like a miracle. Because we had so many months in the past where it was like, Every month it was like, okay, which bill are we going to put off till next month? Because we don't have enough to cover everything. Around the time we started doing this, our, our youngest, Annie, was about to be born. And so we, we knew that was going to be adding to our expenses too. And it, it, like I said, it was, it was a scary, uncertain time. But we knew we could trust Jesus. And we did. And he, he grew our faith through that tremendously. 